There is uh, a lot of chatter going on at the moment and a lot of saber rattling and the plan put forward by Alexei Mikhailov on Russian state television to build fake cities resembling London and Washington in the Arctic and then destroy them with a Bulava missile is probably about as bizarre and extreme as it gets in terms of Russian propaganda. I don't think you would get any closer to absurdity than suggesting that Putin was living in a fridge. The claim, which involves constructing replicas of iconic structures like Buckingham Palace and the White House from plywood, followed by their destruction in a nuclear demonstration, is designed as symbolic warning to the West. Haven't we already seen that in something like um, uh, the, 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 the thing where... Um, where, where, where the White House is destroyed, and uh, what, what, what wasn't that wasn't that one of those um, one of those things where aliens land, um, the the uh, twenty twelve or something one one of those films. I would have thought they could do it with special effects, um, and it, it reflects a level of rhetorical escalation in Russian state media, particularly in the context of the ongoing war in Ukraine and tensions with Western nations. And the Bulava missile, a cornerstone of Russia's nuclear triad, is a potent weapon with an estimated range of over 8,300 kilometres and the capability to deliver multiple warheads. And Mikhailov's assertion that the test would show the devastation that a single warhead could inflict on cardboard and plywood is meant to showcase Russia's nuclear strength and intimidate opponents, especially the UK and the US, for their support of Ukraine. And the historical reference to Novaya Zemlya, which served as a Soviet nuclear testing ground during the Cold War, including the site of the Tsar Bomba, the largest nuclear explosion ever, adds to this dramatic backdrop. But the proposal, though absurd and likely um, impossible, underscores the extremism and the theatrical nature of state-controlled Russian media, the use of nuclear rhetoric, the saber-rattling, the imagery as a means of propaganda is a stark reminder of how these tensions are being fueled by narratives of destruction and conflict rather than a quest for peace. Mikhailov's plan, while fantastical, highlights the broader propaganda war that Russia is waging and has been waging all along uh, side its um, military engagements, leveraging nuclear threats, exaggerated scenarios to unsettle its adversaries. The Bulava missile itself is a relatively new addition to, nu to Russia's nuclear arsenal, and its role in this narrative reflects the Kremlin's desire to project strength, along with the Poseidon missile, which hasn't even seen testing yet. And although such threats are not taken at face value by Western analysts, the psychological impact of these narratives cannot be dismissed quite so immediately or quite so entirely as they're aimed at both domestic and international audiences. And nevertheless, military experts in the West generally question the strategic value of such displays, considering more posturing than an actionable military strategy. It's about uh, the peacock and the turkey preening themselves um, rather than being served for dinner. Uh, you know, Mary had a little lamb in Russian hands. This is, about, um, this is about what she's eating, not what she's taking to school. And the idea of building fake cities and nuking them is emblematic of Russia's current approach to its propaganda war, mixing the fantastical with real weapons to instill fear and bolster its image as a capable global power. Uh, with the potential to inflict nuclear devastation either on others or on its own people.